showing up, first off. That's awesome. Um, I'll just introduce myself really quick. My name is Michael Dryling, and I work for Counseling Services. And I am Carolyn Rodriguez, and I'm a psychology intern at Counseling Services. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this or not, but every Tuesday we do have, at this time period, in this same lecture hall here, we have a little thing called Cat Chats. We have the flyers out there and everything. Just out of curiosity, I think I can ask this. Uh, why did you choose to come today? Well, uh, first off, my leadership studies has been doing that. Nice. And my, I had a uh, high school professor that worked about my sense of that. Awesome. That's cool. That's even interesting. I'm doing an outside team for, for my book. Awesome. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, no, it's great. That's good to hear. Um, all wonderful reasons to come, no matter what the reason was. It's good to see you all. Um, we had, we, when we designed this part, this program here, it was designed to be a three-part program, uh, making lasting changes. But with that in mind, we, we designed it so if you didn't make it to the first one, you could still get a lot out of the second one, and the same with the third one or anything. But... Um, before we get into that, let me tell you just a little quick couple things about Counseling Services. If you don't know, we're located right next door, the English Counseling Services building. On the second floor, you see all the stuff up there that we offer. There's so much that we, that we offer there, anything, everything you could think of. Um, we have an online program that deals with academic anxiety and stress management. Uh, the University of Life Cafe, if you've never heard of it, check it out down there. It's got a lot of interesting things. Uh, we have individual counseling, group counseling, uh, biofeedback, career assessments. Maybe you don't know where you're, where you're at right now, what you want to do, you feel lost, um, that type of stuff. Caroline could probably add a little bit there too, if you wish. Yeah, so we do kind of a group therapy, individual therapy, couples counseling if the both students are key state um, students. Uh, we can do um, consults where we'll do maybe like one or two sessions if somebody just kind of won't get to come in, ask what kind of resources there are on campus. We teach a career exploration class. Did you mention that? I did not, no. Okay, so we teach a career exploration class for students who are trying to figure out maybe what they want to major in or what, what's, what, what they want to be when they quote unquote grow up. Um, so we're, we do a lot of different things. We biofeedback, which is great for performance and anxiety um, concerns. Or, or growth, um, you know, just a big variety. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact County Services or ask Mike or myself on the presentation. Most definitely, and we have the website there. Just uh, one last thing on that, there's a, nothing too little or too big, just you know, sometimes people think, oh, I shouldn't come because of, just, you know, if there's something you think, give us a call, check the website out, and a wonderful group of people there. All right. So this one in particular, this part of the Making Lasting Changes series, talks about how mindsets impact progress. And, but before we go into that, I just want to give kind of a quick summary of session one uh, for those of you who are interested in it, and that was called Starting the Year Off Right. We gave this in January, near the end of January. It was the second week of classes, and you know how it is. I, any of you freshmen? Three freshmen? You sophomore? Okay, so that's a good guess, right? What was the next one? It's junior, right? <laughs> but all right, so freshmen, this is great, especially freshmen and even sophomore. You all probably, you had your first semester, and then over December, January, during the holiday break, there were probably things you were like, wow, I really want to do this differently from the first semester. Or then there's the classic New Year's resolutions, and that's kind of what we were designing off of, people always wanting to make changes, whether it's small, large, you name it. Um, and you can catch right there on the website there, if you click on that, uh, you will find the actual recording of the first session. And any of our sessions from the Cat Chats are, is on that website. But, so we were talking about changes. Just for instance, anything, and you guys, you know, if you don't, if, and ladies, if you don't feel safe or you don't want to talk right now, that's fine, but I, I'm just going to ask for anyone back there up front here. Anything you remember back in January that you're like, hey, I'd really like to change this? Go to the rec, yeah, that's, that's a very common one. Yes, it's a good one. 
Ex- exactly. That's a good. That that was one too. We definitely we talked about was you know either getting out of a relationship or becoming a better partner, etc. Great. Those are very common ones. Anything? Relationship. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Big one. Exactly. As you can see there, I just mentioned a couple of academics. That was, you know, you mentioned that was a big one. A lot of times students are looking at their first semester grades and go, ouch, um, that 2.5 is not going to cut it. I want to get a, you know, X, whether it's 4.0, 3.5, whatever. Stress, a lot of times, you know, managing stress, probably right now, you're at midterms roughly. I'm sure, there's been some stress. Uh, it's kind of make or break at time in a way in your head sometimes. Uh, physical health, you mentioned the rec, definitely in January, whether your college students are all over the world, what do you see commercials all the time for fitness centers, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, organization, time management, maybe some of you all having problems with that. Maybe you're procrastinating a lot, um, that type of stuff. Finances, it's tough to be a college student in general, you know, so just try to get your finances in order. Sleep schedule, now that's another common one that people will bring up. They realize I'm only getting five hours of sleep a night, uh, but why? Well, there's lots of reasons why. But, and then we went over the first session, we went over the false hope syndrome, which Caroline's gonna go over more, but the basic of that is, remember in January, when you decided, you said, oh, I'm gonna go to the rec more often, that's what I'm gonna do. And for that first day or two, it really got you excited. You thought, I can do this, I know I can do this, and it sounds exciting, I'm gonna go to the rec five days a week. And then the first week you went, four days, maybe five days, and the second week you're all sore and you can't move and you kind of lose that excitement and then you kind of realize this is hard, this is really hard to do, and then you just quit. And then it's kind of an endless cycle. But I'll let Caroline talk more about that. Then we talked about some of the barriers. What's actually preventing you for, say, grade-wise? I want to get better grades. For instance, I want to study more. Well, what are some of the barriers? What's, what's getting in your way of studying more? Time, you know, that's always an excuse I hear. I don't have enough time. Okay, distractions. Maybe you, you play too many video games. Maybe you watch too much Netflix. Maybe you binge watch House of Cards too much. Uh, awesome show. Uh, maybe you try to do too much too early. That goes back to the, the, the rec reference I was talking about. You know, you want to you work out five hour or five days a week at the first week. You're going to burn out, right? Same with studying. When you say, I'm going to study an extra 40 hours a week, you know, this semester, you know, good luck on that. The first week you do that, you're going to get burned out, right? So you're doing too much too, too early. Unrealistic goals, kind of with the 40 hours a week. Are you really going to be able to study 40 hours a week? Maybe you could, maybe you can't. We set unrealistic goals. Another thing, fear of trying something new. Uh, another barrier, support. You know, lacking support from our friends, our peers, our parents, our loved ones, you name it. Um, and then we talked about motivation some. We talked about intrinsic versus in- extrinsic motivation. They both have positives. There's, there's some downfalls to some. Uh, Carolyn, you might touch a little bit on that. Yeah, so when you have intrinsic motivation, it doesn't have the same type of longevity as intrinsic motivation. Because intrinsic motivation you're, means that you're doing something just because you love doing it. Does anyone have an example of something they do, not for a grade or they're getting paid, they just do because they love doing it? Fixing your truck. Oh, that's a great example. Yes, it's a really good one. So, is how long have you been fixing your truck? <laughs> so, a lot of longevity then? And with how long you've been working on your truck? And the motivation you have to continue working on it? Okay. So, would any of that's a great example. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, does anyone have an example of something that they're doing for almost external reasons? For an external prize or grade? Well, in general. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tell me a little bit more, if you don't mind. Um, I mean, like, okay, so for me, I really, really enjoy the science and engineering half of it, but I don't really enjoy the math half of it. And so that's always going to be half of what I'm doing. And so the math half of it's what I really don't want to do. And I'm frankly probably going to end up putting less effort into it because I don't like it as much. So you're not going to have the same, like, endurance while you're doing that type of homework. And then the homework where you're like, I love this subject. Okay, it's great examples. Thank you so much for sharing. 
I love the school example. I think the school example is one of the best examples of kind of the fight between intrinsic and, and extrinsic motivation, definitely. And, and we touched, you guys touched on both of those very well. Just out of curiosity, the truck uh, example, not to keep on going back to that, but what major, what's your major, if, if you mind me? Mechanical engineering, kind of, kind of fitting. Uh, do you think you would enjoy it less if, if, if that was your job all day long was to be a mechanic? Exactly, and that kind of goes back to what we were talking about. That's a great example. Um, we touched on the stages of change, and that's one of the good, the nice things to talk about. Is change is a pro, you know, it's a it's a process. It's not just something that happens overnight. You know, we think it is at times, and that initial thought can be, but just the thought of I am going to, I am going to study more and get better grades this semester. Uh, you know, there's there's things that go through. There's the pre-contemplation stage, then you're kind of contemplating about it, then maybe you're actually kind of going through, how am I actually going to do this? There's some trial and error with that, and then there's the actual action when you're getting into it. And then the maintenance phase, where if you did do that, would be where you're at maybe right now at the midterm, where you're actually having to reevaluate and go, you know what, yeah, I am doing 20 hours, okay, maybe I need to switch this around, this around, etc. I have these handouts, too, I'll give them to you all here in a second. It was the, the workbook that we had the first time, so if you can just look through it. And then we talked about smart goal setting, which is important. We set goals so many times, but they're not specific. For instance, I want to, I want to have a better semester academically. Wonderful goal, but how specific is that, you know? Uh, is it measurable? Well, what would be a measurable actual goal for the, you know, increasing your academic performance this semester? Would it be hours? That could be one, measure in more hours. Uh, GPA is one that can be uh, problems with that. Sometimes can be real, you know, to be realistic and to set, you know, if if you're going, if you're saying I'm going to have a 4.0 this semester, yet you're taking 21 credit hours and they're all, you know, chemistry, biology, mechanical engineering, you know, you know are, is that realistic? Possibly, but you know, maybe set something a little bit lower, maybe more real, realistic. And then time-based, which we'll talk about, or we did talk about, I'm sorry. Why don't you talk? Okay, so I'm going to jump in, and I just want to note that I have at the last slide um, where you can pull up these, um, the different information on different slides, I pulled this up directly from the different articles, so if there's any questions or if you guys want more information, um, you guys can find where the references are. So kind of what building what Mike said, well, I guess kind of raise your hand of the individuals here. Who was in part of the last session of the false hope syndrome? No, no, no. Okay, so I'm going to go over it a little bit. Um, the false hope syndrome um, is basically three different things. is vowing to change, um, being surprised how difficult it is, and giving up because it doesn't provide the same type of emotional boost that the initial response or initial uh, resolution did. So I heard earlier, if you don't mind, my user gym example? Okay, when you first thought about going to the gym, how, did you feel really excited? Mm, okay. Was, was there any challenges with that to continue going to the gym? Well, uh, for one, it's cold. Cool. Cool. Training drive down. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, just laziness. Okay. So kind of having that motivation mm -hmm. then, okay. Um, so what helped you not give up? Um, well, for one, my roommate. Mm. He really kind of like pushed for me because both of us kind of made the resolution and he kind of wanted to do it a little more than I did. So Great. he kind of like pushes me into doing it more. And then I gave myself two there, two to the is kind of hard. But That's a really great example. And I think it's really interesting how you said your friend, since your friend's doing it too, um, it's like that extra little push, right? I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to get back to that. Um, does anyone, before I move to the next slide, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So, going off of kind of your per gym example, are New Year's resolutions an effective approach for personal growth? No. Okay, you want to tell me a little bit about that? Think they're crazy? Yeah, 
So maybe there's not a lot of, um, correct me if I'm wrong, like internal value because it's New Year's, I'm making this goal or this change, but there's no, I want to say the word substance, would that be a good word or meaning behind it? Low sincerity. Yeah. I like that. Good. Okay. So what Parker found is, and this is coming from the article, is it depends what kind of resolutions you set. For many people, New Year's resolutions are an expression of hope, not an actual plan for the future. Research shows that when people re resolve to change, they immediately feel more confident, in control, and hopeful. They feel stronger and taller, which is kind of ridiculous, but just shows how uplifting resolving to change can be. If people want to make resolutions as a way to connect to growth mindset, and growth mindset is the belief that through effort and support, ding, 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 friend, you can change, grow in meaningful ways. That's fine. It's not necessarily a strategy if you fall short. So, how are people able to cope when changing with difficult with challenges, right? What in the past have I heard that your friend has helped you? Does anyone have any other examples that have been helpful? When you're trying to make a change, like what's helped you? Circumstances. Circumstances. And what can you tell me, can you elaborate a little bit more about that? else well thank you I think that's those are great points and um, I'm gonna ask you guys now now to explain a little bit further on the first page of your pack you, uh, there's a question Will Smith says skill only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft take a few minutes and write down the time when you worked really really hard on a project or skill surprise yourself with your grit what made you work so hard Ask another question. Did you ever feel like giving up? What kept you going? How did it turn out? And is this pace okay? Or are you guys feeling rushed? Okay. If anyone, I always want to be talking with you guys and never to you. So if I'm going too fast, just say, Caroline, like slow down a little bit. <laughs> How did it turn out? What did you feel when it was all over? So now, since we're kind of a smaller group, I'm gonna give you guys options. If you guys wanna break into two groups of two, or if you guys want to talk about your responses as a group, I mean, what would be the best, do you think, for you guys? As a group? Okay. Cool. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. So, 
I guess kind of you guys just kind of jump in and I guess maybe have a group discussion um, with each other if y'all want to kind of face each other. Maybe y'all can like move to the the the, the 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 man in the green shirt and then have somebody in front of him and somebody like a little square or a little group circle over there. Thank you. If there, if anyone heard some themes about, um, I don't have to give you the definition yet, but with the, if you guys had a hypothesis, what's there's two things that um, enable people to cope with those difficult, challenging, difficult times. The big why. Would anyone have any predictions on what the big why? I haven't told you yet. <laughs> so you know, just kind of if you guys had to take a wild guess, what would you guys guess? If you don't mind, can you repeat that, please? And, and I think you're definitely on the right path. I'm going to give you a little hint here. So let's think about the why. Um, yes, you guys can move back to your regular seats. Um, you guys can um, the, the, think about the why as why you don't give up. You're real close, really close. <laughs> Fear, okay. Um, having some positivity, not having fear, okay. Anyone else has a guess? Motivation of some kind. Mm -hmm. Okay. So motivation, I'm hearing fear, kind of um, like kind of a purpose. We guys think maybe there's a purpose. Um, and what are some things that could be purposes? Do you guys think? Personal benefit, that's a great answer. 
avoided personal loss. I'm going to get into that a little bit. We're going to really d get into that in a minute. And the other one would be mindset, which is one of my favorite topics. I'm so excited for you to talk about it today. So, you guys, we're ex right on track. The big why. Purpose. Connected to values. The importance. And the best kind, so this is coming from the Parker article again. The best, time of re the best kind of resolution is the one that has a big why to create health, to reconnect with personal passion, to strengthen an important relationship, to change your financial situation, to develop yourself in some way, or to contribute to others in some way. And then you pick a small action to change that reflects this big goal. To remind yourself of it and to help you take steps towards it. So what do you guys think about that? If you guys had to think about your examples, you guys, what is your guys' big why? So it sounds like maybe instead of a change of finance, it was trying to, um, to like either uphold or um, keep improving or support your grade. Is that about? Yeah. Okay, that's a great example. Anyone else? Not everyone at one time, please. <laughs> um, so what was your big why in the example we just did? Okay. So would that maybe be like a, a personal value or a personal, a personal thing that you value, would you say? Yeah. Okay, and you find it for it? That's great. Okay. All right. So does that does everyone does anyone have any questions of that before we move on to the next slide? Okay. If you do, feel free to interrupt me anytime. And Mike, do you have anything to add or change? Okay, so now comes the fun part. In your second page of your um, page, we're gonna do a mindset survey. And I know I haven't told you a lot about it yet because I kinda want you to take it without knowing too too much about mindset. I'm sure you guys have heard at the beginning you guys, some of you guys had some experience with mindset. Um, the history of mindset is Carol Dreck at Columbia University started doing research with children and she wanted to see how children reacted to puzzles or math problems or readings that were you know outside their bounds at the moment. Um, so Mindset was originally applied to intelligence and then it was applied to um, parent relationships. It's been applied to executive CEO making. It's been applied to performance and athletics. So now mindset's really kind of can be all over the place since it's a core belief you have about yourself um, or beliefs. So I'm going to let you all do the student mindset survey on intelligence here, which is the second page in your handout. I guess I should read for the people in the audience. Okay. Um, are you talking about the actual questions? Yeah. So I will read the questions. Is there anyone on Zoom? Um, Is that one person on Zoom? Yeah, I can't tell if they're actually active right now. read the questions in case somebody's out there. No matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change it a good amount. And you'll be ranking them. One is disagree a lot. Two, disagree. Three, disagree a little. Four, agree a little. Five, agree. Six, agree a lot. And you'll be using this same type of ranking for all eight questions here. Okay. The second question will be, you can learn new things, but you cannot really change your basic amount of intelligence. 
and say if you were going to do one on athletic performance, it would read something like, "You can learn, you can you can improve in your sport, but you cannot really change your basic talent." The the third question is, "I like school work best when it makes me think hard." Number four. I like school work best when I can do it, but well without too much trouble. Number five, I like school work that I'll learn from even if I make a lot of mistakes. Six, I like school work best when I can do it perfectly without any mistakes. Seven, when something is hard, it just makes me want to work more on it, not less. Eight, to tell you the truth, when I work hard at my schoolwork, it makes me feel like I'm not very smart. So now, we're going to score it. Da, 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 da. Okay, so first, and this is the directions here are a little bit, um, takes always takes at least me a second to understand what's going on. Um, for questions with odd numbers, that's one, three, five, and seven. You're going to write your answers to the box of the right of the column. So for once again, the odd questions, you're going to be putting the number you circled right in those white boxes right there. And then for the even questions, you're going to use this table on here. So say, for example, for question two, I put down, you can learn, well, ask Mike. Mike. Yes. You can learn new things, but you can't really change your basic intelligence. What did you circle? I, I put disagree. Okay. So you, so you had put it two. Okay, so then I would go to this chart and I would pick disagree that's two, and I would pick a five and put a five in the box next to it. So I would put a five in the white right box on the next section. And you would only do that for the evens. Does that make sense? It's a little, it always takes me a second. Maybe we walk around to kind of see? Does anyone have any questions or confused? Because it is kind of, it can be kind of read it a few times and kind of see what's happening. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, yeah, so you're going to have one total at the end. And so for the even numbers, yes, yes, yes. So basically, um, they're just flipped for the even questions. It's a little confusing. Oh, yeah. And there is, and this is on the mind, it is this this program, I mean this assessment, is on her um, link that will be at the end of this um, presentation. presentation. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. And you could be able to do it right online if you wanted to do it via the internet or figure it out. The interweb. Interweb. Okay. <laughs> so. I don't, does anyone have any questions that everyone was able to figure out their mindset total? Do you need a few more minutes? No. Okay. Oh, you got it? Okay. Um, and it is, it is, like I said, it is kind of worded a little differently. So if you go to the score, you will see the breadth the range is mean. And I don't know if anyone feels comfortable or not comfortable, because um, never I always want everyone to feel safe, um, you know, sharing because this is about yourself. 
Um, does anyone does anyone feel surprised or disagreed with what they found, what it said, or or want to share? I got thirty six. You got thirty six. Okay. Um, so your your description says you believe that your intelligence is something that you can increase. You care about learning and you're willing to work hard. You want to do well, but you think it's really important to learn and always score well. Would you say that? Um, I agree with that. Agree with that? It's where I score. I would agree with that. <laughs> Exactly what I agree with. It's awesome. And if you do this mapping program, which is, is comes out from the example of the first chapter free online, but if you signed up for it, um, they would give you more assessment of what that meant. But um, you know, that that means I have a question for you too. So and we're going to get a little bit more into this in the presentation. I know I kind of jumped there. Is do you feel like you have a growth mindset um, with your intelligence? Is there another area in your life that you feel like you fall into a different category? Um, for intelligence, you said you agreed with that. But say, if you were, what is something else you do in your life? You live in the library, <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go to your mechanic. Can I use your mechanic example with you? Okay, so I heard you really like to work on cards. Do you feel like you can get better um, at, as you continue working on cars? Do you feel like you'll learn more about cars and do it quicker? Yeah. Is there something in your life, and you don't have to share if you don't want to, um, that you feel like maybe you're maybe stuck at a certain level? I'll use myself for example. I played the cello. I played the cello for nine years in school. I loved it. But I was so unmusically tuned to my ears <laughs> that I gave myself a headache. <laughs> when I played, I enjoyed it. But I, I do feel like that's something where I'm <laughs> set. I love the cello, but it's not my, I, I don't seem, I never see my growth. <laughs> I try. Um, does anyone else have anything like that or? That maybe it's more fixed. Level of reading. Level of reading. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it, it, is that <laughs> something? <more> <laughs> so, so is that something you feel like no matter how much you keep reading that it still kind of stays the same? Yeah, okay. So that's interesting. We're gonna get back to that point. So it seems like you have different mindsets. For different areas of your life. Hmm, interesting. We'll get back to that. Does anyone else want to share their um, mindset score or want to? 29? Okay. Would it be okay with you if I read the description of 29? Okay. Um, so, yours says you haven't really decided if you're sure whether you can change your intelligence. You care about your grades and you also want to learn. But you don't really want to have to work too hard for it. Um, a lot with that you can always change. I would disagree a lot with that you can't change. But I mean, I work really hard for my grades, so but I like school best when I can do it. So it sounds like you will definitely be the, you're resilient when it might be, you do kind of feel a bit more challenged, you absolutely go after it, but you prefer it smooth sailing, kind of. Yeah. And, that, and that makes total sense, yeah. I really like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, because I can make it through it. <laughs> um, you know, and that, that, that's a very like common thing, um, thing, so I really want to normalize that, you know. Um, Oftentimes, what we're good at, or is what we like, um, is what is. Does anyone play a sport, or play an instrument, or sing, or um, cook? Yes, yeah, again. Play volleyball. Okay. Is are you? Do you feel like you have talent of volleyball? 
is do you think that since having talent in volleyball that helps you like it? Um, so this is, I just really kind of wanted to throw out this to kind of get the juices flowing in your brain. But I guess, do we have any questions before we continue on? Or does anyone else want to share theirs? Thank you guys so much for participating. I really do appreciate it. Um, anyone else? That is a great question. That's a great question. That kind of bounces off what I was talking to. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Gentleman in the, young, in, in the back. Um, is No, they are not. You guys are so, you guys are so um, engaged. I really appreciate you listening to me. It's, it's, it's really dependent on the environment and the situation and what it's towards. So I could have, for example, a very different mindset towards playing the cello versus how I felt about school, or how I felt about sports, or how I feel about my relationships. So it's not um, across the board. It's situational, and it's it can change, which we'll get into. Okay. So next slide. Oh, you're there already. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to go over what a mindset is. It's beliefs about yourself, and the key words beliefs. Um, is your most basic qualities. Think about your intelligence, your talents, your personality. Um, and kind of going back to how this um, um, relates to hope, the hope. Hope, yes. Um, is that your mindset matters if people want to seriously engage in the process of change. So remember how if we go to the packet in this one, and we go, there should be a little triangle. Thing. Ah. Go to this page. So it's page three, right? That vow to change, changing, difficult, difficult changing, and then we give up, right? And that's what's when you feel the hope syndrome. So right now, and this is brand new research is coming out, and it's really it, I linked the article where I got this all at the back. But change involves setbacks. Research shows that people who ultimately succeed have no fewer setbacks on early than people who eventually give up. So the first thing is to expect to fail at some point and not take it as evidence as to change is crucial. People give up after setbacks when they don't know the ending and they suspect it will be, I failed. But you can choose the ending and make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of throw it out there. Has anyone ever gave up because they don't know for sure there's a guarantee? I'll give a good example. It's the, it's the example of it's January and you want to get your spring break bod going on. You know, you always hear people talk about that. It's a common college analogy. And, and you know you work out the first two or three weeks and, and you're not seeing major results anytime in the gym you're not seeing major results it takes a long time it takes a lot of dedication it takes a lot of things you just don't see it so you quit that one's happened to him a million times right here <laughs> so that's a really good example and sometimes the unknown is a little bit uncomfortable or might we might have to change but that's the whole thing of growth mindset which we're going to go to next and thank you, Mike, for sharing. Oh, yeah, no okay. Problems. So this is where the book came out from, um, all these different theories. It's Mindset. I highly recommend if you ever want some summer or spring break reading. Um, a fixed mindset is intelligence is fixed trait. A growth mindset, intelligence is a malleable trait. It's potential that it can be developed, so it's nurture. And, you know, right here they're using towards intelligence, but that's pretty much with trying to change or improve or grow in any different things. And that can be, I'm gonna get better with the cars, I'm gonna get better with my cello, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna swim better, or I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be able to improve with my grades. So it it's, can really be applied um, throughout things. So if you, this is the book, um, it's, it's well versed in the, because I heard a few of our um, students are in leadership program, business and leadership, it, it's, there's a lot of CEOs who are big into growth mindset and if you Google that you can find some cool stuff with it. So 
video. Aha! Okay, so I'm going to read the slide. Um, would you like to read the mail? Uh, definitely. Okay. I failed the test. I give up. I can't do it. What are you going to do for the test next week? <laughs> I'm going to cheat off of Susie. I can't learn this and I really want an A. She got an A. Do I get an Oscar for that? That's pretty good. Isn't it? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, folks. Oh. <laughs> so, when he was giving that the conviction, you heard all the stuff. What, what mindset did you hear in his voice? Uh huh, exactly. So, going off y'all's question you just asked me can you grow your intelligence? Aha, uh -huh. so that's the next page in your workbook. Well, actually, I have them explain. This is a diagram from Brain Brainology, Chapter 1. This is a link at the back. So, if everyone can turn to this page. And so I'll kind of read it out loud. Um, can you grow your intelligence? New research shows that the brain can be developed like a muscle. Many people think of the brain as a mystery. They don't know much about intelligence and how it works. And uh, using intelligence here, it's how we see, we, how we see the different things we believe ourselves um, and how it works. So it can be, and I'm jumping around here. So it can be like athletic performance or um, car mechanics. Um, when you do think about what intelligence is, many people believe that a person is born smart, average, or dumb, and stays that way for life. Does anyone, is that anyone, has anyone ever heard like something like that or something similar? What do you guys think? So you can put in a little bubble right here. Woo! What do you think, Mike? I put yes and no. Very political answer to walk the, the fence. Plus, it was my way to get you guys to engage and go, what does he mean by yes and no? Okay. High five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to ask me? Nice job. <laughs> nice job. Uh, well, you know, it, it's a great question to think about, you know, plus. What exactly is smart, average, or you know, dumb? Those words, you know, to me, that's what they are. They're words. So, that's more of the yes, and the no part would be to actually define them. You know, once you actually get a definition, then no. Obviously, there are some biological and neurological effects that would make someone incapable of, you know, being intelligent to a fact, you know, to a certain extent, but. I wouldn't say that they couldn't change, you know, work on it in some factor, if that makes any sense at all. You, you know, like environment reasons would be another good reason too, you know, so, you know, socioeconomic status and such. You know, when you don't have the opportunity, you don't have the schools to go to, you don't have the good schools, you know, all that type of stuff. You could be labeled as, as dumb and then you go through your whole life thinking, well, I'm dumb which is, you know, very sad to even think about. So um, that's why I put the yes and no, just like, yeah. yeah. Any, any insight? I don't know. I'm always at the thought that you can always change. Like, just flat out. You can decide at some point that you're going to make a change, and so long as you can follow through, which is the hard part of it, then I was going to yield the results of something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I like that. That's good. Good, I like here, that's good. So those are, oh sorry. I say like, yes, you can change. I have dyslexia and stuff, so like growing up, like, I don't work like 10 times harder, but I did like improve. Mm -hmm. Like I got to like tier four, and I'm like, it wasn't really improving, even after we were working so as hard. Um, but so I mean, it's always kind of low when you get to the first step. And that's a really great example. I'm actually going to use the chalkboard here, or maybe if there is. Yeah, I've used it before. Possibly. Somebody hit the markers.
Okay, so I will talk to you about what I was going to draw. Okay, so I, I think you really do mention a really great point is that there's some things that are um, a little bit of talent, you know, some things, but there's also the balance of hard work, right? So uh, some of my research as undergrad was um, looking at athletic performance and mindsets, you know, and I was a swimmer, so I'm going to use a swimming example. Uh, Michael Phelps, he works really hard. In fact, I have this great article um, he, when he didn't perform like his usual um, that he said, you know, I wasn't training. He still performed superior than most swimmers would ever dream of, but it's, it's, it, it wasn't his best. So even though he was really talented, um, he wasn't as great um, as he was when he was working hard. Um, and when we looked, when I looked at this as undergrad, it, we found that athletes, oh, let me see if this is, is that the next slide by chance? Oh, no. So basically we found that athletes um, who believe in hard work, they would improve longer over a great period of time, so like small increments. Um, so here it is, I mean, she did it with um, children. And then we found that athletes were like, I believe in my talent and I don't, um, I don't need to work hard because I can just, you know, go in the pool and do my thing and I'm going to be great. And they were probably, because of that confidence, was better at the beginning, but didn't see the same type of improvement. So kind of if I go back to you, you know, correct me because, you know, you know all this stuff kind of with yourself, is that it sounds like, you know, you're at K-State, you know, it sounds like you worked really hard and you got to college, you know, and maybe you had to put a little bit more effort in, you know, worked really, really hard, but you made it to college. Is that, is that something how you kind of feel or? And I really appreciate, like I said earlier, everyone sharing your examples. Um, and I think something, you, like going based off what you said, and um, is research shows that you it's more like a muscle, and you can change, and you can get stronger. So maybe, and I don't know, maybe writing still not your forte, like the chill is not my forte at all. But it sounds like you know you're able to take classes here, you know, with certain support, and it's been a it, compared to maybe say five years ago, are you in a different place because of the hard work? Like I said, I really appreciate you sharing that again, and um, I think that's a great example of, you know, sometimes we do have different, um, I guess, ability levels, but then when you're able to work hard, there's a longevity of you were able to prove for all those years. Um, so does that make sense, anyone, or questions about that? So now we're gonna go to, um, I thought instead of words, I thought this picture was kind of fun. So, if you have a growth mindset, what are some dialogues you might have when you have a fixed mindset? So, I don't like to fail. 
I feel threatened by other people's success. I don't like to avoid challenges. I give up quickly. I say I can't. I don't like to ask questions in case I sound stupid. I have negative internal dialogue that I'm an idiot. I ignore constructive criticism. So when Dr. Dreck was originally doing this research, she was giving these children um, this math problems or a task that they were above their, their ability at that point, okay? She was finding that the children who had a fixed mindset, they would go, this is stupid, I don't wanna do this, or I can't do this, like, I wanna go home. Because they, there was this thing of um, feeling like they should be perfect or they couldn't grow or they couldn't play with it, you know, playing with how to figure out how to do it. Whereas the children with the growth mindset, we flip to the next page, I'm hitting that, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, they would go, oh, this is fun. And they would want to do more because it was, they didn't see their mistakes as mistakes. They saw it as, okay, this is something I'm going to improve on. Or, hey, you know, writing is an area I could get better on. Or, hey, I can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star after four years. Or, you know, that they saw it was, it was fun. It was something they could challenge themselves. And they were excited about it. They felt motivation from it. And some of the things that, you know, maybe that might be going on um, was in the children's self-dialogue was, I find lessons and I find inspiration in other people's success. I have a positive internal dialogue. I'm getting better. I say I can do it. I am comfortable making mistakes. And, I, and I'm personally not huge on the word mistakes. I'm more on growth areas. And then um, as I can learn from criticism. So instead of saying, um, Caroline, say if Mike said this morning, hey, Caroline, like I saw your parking <laughs> job and I think we might be able to do it better. And instead of you know thinking like, ah, I did it wrong, I'd be like, yes, I might be able to learn how to park better. And that's soon I'm gonna be able to hit it the first shot. <laughs> so I would be really excited that, you know, that, hey, I have some room to grow. So go back to your packets if you guys don't mind. What can you do to get smarter? Just like a weightlifter or a basketball player, you have to exercise and practice and make your brain grow stronger. By practicing, you, all, you also learn skills that you, that you let you use your brain in a smarter way, just like a basketball player learns new moves. Why doesn't everyone do this? Okay. Many people miss out on the chance to grow stronger brain because they think they can't do it. They think it's too hard. They think it's too much. Can you relate? Remember a time when you, were, you worked extremely hard on something and it was first a difficult, but after practice, we were able to succeed. Yeah, we got like 20 minutes. So that's pretty similar to the exercise we did at the beginning and due to time. Um, would it be okay with everyone if we saved that one on your own? Okay. Okay. So this kind of goes back to the question that you guys had earlier. Um, um, are you always on the same team? And as you guys brought up before, no, it's really dependent on what area it is. So it can be different and that's why you have mindsets and not a mindset. And a person with a growth, uh, a fixed mindset is gonna believe that talent is inborn. So, um, she avoids challenge, she gives up easily, um, sees effort as temporary, gets frustrated, ignores feedback, whereas somebody who believes ability can be developed, she embraces challenges, she desires to learn and improve, she believes that effort is important. So kind of going back to the value, the value of I'm working really hard, um, when they were talking to the children, um, they found that um, in the second part of the study, going back to the children, when parents would praise their children going, um, say if they were painting something, okay, and they would praise it, go, hey, hey little Mike, it looks <laughs> like you put a lot of time in thinking what colors you wanted to paint with. I am really proud of the time and effort you spent in picking out the different colors. Can you tell me a little bit about why you picked green and white and blue 
Well, I really like blue because it's the color of the ocean. Ah. And oranges taste yummy, so I like oranges. And so th what's kind of cool about this, and because I know with, um, we go into like leadership studies and business is talking to employees and um, creating an environment where you can have growth moments. So instead of praising like, you did that perfect, that was, that was a home run with this report you gave me, saying like, you know what, thank you for putting all that effort into that. I know you really spent a hard time. It creates and it promotes a work environment that, um, that embraces people to grow and to feel like they can get better and then they're not have they are not fixed in a place with whatever they're doing um, and they found that parents who kind of went Mike you're such a great artist you are going to be the next Picasso you're amazing the little children would find that to be um, a lot of pressure they felt like they couldn't make a growth area because it was either all or nothing, you know. They they were almost walking eggshells. They had to be perfect, and then coloring was no longer fun. It took the joy out of it. Does that make sense? Did they have like a name for that concept? Um, so it's it's having a growth mindset versus um, having a, it's called entirety theory, believing in um, talent versus. Um, having a malleable mindset, which means you're able to grow and change, um, or incremental. So you're able to make changes, which will go more into the book. I really love this topic, so I can go um, to the moon on this, but it's, it's, it's been applied in a lot of different areas, and um, a, lot of, a lot of work has been done with children and COs and athletes in particularly. But, and anyone in performance, I would say, um, not so much athletes, but performers so any questions great question though I really appreciate it any other questions before um, we move on to the next slide okay so did we do this one okay yeah, we did that one. so how do we change our mindset right say if I have a fixed mindset on how I'm playing the cello how is I, how am I gonna change my mindset okay and this is all taken from the mindset website so it's you know, taken, I have that link on the back of this. Um, as you approach a challenge, that voice might say to you, are you sure you can do this? Maybe you don't have a talent. What do you, what do, you do if you fail? You'll be a failure. People will laugh at you or think you had a talent. If you don't try, you think you protect yourself and keep your dignity. As you hit a setback, the voice might say, this would have been a snap if you really had talent. You see, I told you it was, was a risk. Now you've gone to show the world that how limited you are. It's too late. Back out. Make excuses and try to regain your dignity. As you face criticism, you might hear yourself say, I, it's not my fault. It was something or someone else's fault. You might feel like getting angry at the person who's giving you feedback. Who do they think they are? I'll put them in their place. They, the other person might be giving you specific constructive feedback. Say one might give me how to help me park my car better. Yes. You might be hearing them say, I'm really disappointed in you. I thought you were capable, but now I see you're not. Okay. So does anyone ever heard that when they're facing a challenge, some of those thoughts kind of like, Sorry, questioning, second guessing yourself. I know maybe when I'm taking an exam, like, do I know this? Maybe I trust myself. Like, that seems like a lot of Bs in a row. Uh, <laughs> I love that one, yeah. <laughs> like, I have three Cs, like, I don't know. Um, I love that one. <laughs> so, the next step is, you know, when you're to recognize that, okay? You have a choice. How you interpret challenges, setbacks, and criticism is your choice. You can interpret them in a fixed mindset as signs you have fixed talents or abilities or lacking, or you can interpret them in a growth mindset as signs that you need to ramp up your strategies and effort, stretch yourself, expand your abilities. So you face challenges, setbacks, and criticisms. Listen to the fixed mindset and the next slide. Thank you. As you approach the challenge, okay, these are how different uh, mindsets might approach something. 
Are you sure you can do that? Maybe you don't have the talent. Whereas a growth mindset might say, I'm not sure if I can do it now, but I think I can learn. And with time and effort, maybe I will. Fixed mindset. What if you fail? You'll be a failure. A growth mindset might be, most successful people had failures or along the way. Fixed mindset. If you don't try, you can protect yourself and keep your dignity. This is what a growth mindset would say. If I don't try, I automatically fail. Where's the dignity in that? So it's kind of like reframing. So as you hit a setback, you know, what might be a fixed mindset that somebody's had when they have hit a setback, which would go back to the hope theory, the difficult, challenging thing. What might be a fixed mindset at that point? Give up. Boom. That's perfect. This would have been a snap if you really had that talent. Okay. And what would happen if you have a growth mindset? Instead of giving up, which way might you go? That's so wrong. Basketball wasn't easy for Michael Jordan, and science wasn't easy for Thomas Edison. They had a passion, and they put tons of effort. And as you face criticism, okay, a fixed mindset might be, it's not my fault, it was something else. Or maybe somebody will take responsibility. If I don't take responsibility and hold myself accountable now, I can't fix it. Let me listen, however painful it is, and then I will learn whatever I can. So then, this is I think one of the exciting parts is, <laughs> over time, um, you get to make that choice. Is, is it something that you're gonna choose to get better at, that you're gonna continue to believe that, hey, if I work hard? Or is it gonna be something that you say, hey, I'm not good at this, I wasn't good right away, and maybe I have to find a challenge and give up. And that's when we're gonna go back to, when we're beginning we said the big why. Oftentimes those challenges, they take a lot of effort and hard work. And the why, the big why, like it means something to us, it's valued, it's you know important grades, it's important financially, there's some type of why to it, promotes us being able to have that growth mindset. And we're able to show ourselves lots of times like, hey, Maybe I wasn't sure I did it, but I did it. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? Or So, wrapping up um, here, there's, there's a few pages left in the packet. Um, there's, there's examples, kind of, um, if we can go through, I'll kind of give you guys your choice. Um, that we can go to different phrases, and then you guys can tell me if it's growth or not a growth mindset. Um, and you can tell me how you would rephrase it if it was not a growth mindset. And then the other one I really like is this one because I think it puts hope theory and it into your own life and maybe with your goal or something you want to be changing on now. It's a little bit more applied. I don't know if you guys would want to do that one. So you guys let me know. Which one do you guys want to kind of wrap up with today? Not everyone one time. A, B, C, D, all the above. C. <laughs> C. C, you want the third choice? Is that what it is? So that would be... <laughs> no, no, not really. So this is something that you're... I, maybe talk about something you want to be changing or growing right now or um, that you're being challenged by right now and kind of if we'll do this and kind of bring it back together at the end. Does that sound like a good plan? Okay. And I want to see if you guys have any questions. Is this the one
Does everyone feel like a good place to kind of discuss? You guys need a few more minutes. A few more minutes? Perfect. Take your time. Take your time. Take We are in counseling services to the English and Counseling Building, and that is, um, I cannot remember the address off my head, but it's the English and Counseling Services Building, um, CS, and we can go back to the beginning and the phone number at the beginning. Oh, we're right here. And, it's all right oh, there. there you go. It's everything. Yeah, but no, we, you, we are not. They are, yeah. They're a separate, they're a separate entity. So one is uh, we're the counseling center of the university. That's a really good question. And then they are the from semi from the family services and health um, program on campus. And I we have marriage license and family therapists on our staff, but I think a majority of their staff members are marriage license therapists. Yeah. That's a really great question, though. I was like, I feel like it's a Yeah. If yeah, if if you would more likely than not, if you would go over there to try to get some type of services, you would probably be sent to counseling services. They might tradi Depending. traditionally do more couples work or family things at the family center than, um, or maybe a little bit more children. I'm not sure at the family center here. Whereas we see K State students, and if we see couples, they're both K State students. So we really serve the population at K State. Whereas I believe they see more community members than I think we do. Don't quote me on that, but I think. Yeah, Wendy, edit that out. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah, what their I'm charge sure. rates are. Our charge rates are we have four free sessions, and then sessions from four to ten or fifteen dollars, and after that they're twenty-five dollars onward. Group therapy is seven dollars a session. And that's all per school year or fiscal year? Per fiscal year. Per yes. fiscal year. So. so you have four free sessions with us each year. So for example, you'd have four now from now until the end of June. Correct in June? Yeah. Then start over. In July. Begin in July, end of June. That's a great question. That's a great question. Where we're located is a great question too, because if you could blink and miss it almost sometimes. I almost I went to school here way back in like the 1920s, and I don't even remember that building being over there. It was okay. It was the 30s, but still, the depression was a hard time to go to college. So I'm gonna kind of bring us in back into this last sheet if that looks okay with everyone. Um, did I, did everyone feel like they were able to apply something for something they want to change or take action on? Do you think that holding a growth mindset, how, how might that affect um, you taking action, I think? Mm. Really saying, okay, 
It might be hard right now, but somehow I'm just going to keep working here. It's a great example. And here's a question. This is one of my last questions before I open up for questions. Is how, how do we define our success? What, what does success mean? Does it mean I'm A++++? Or does success mean I worked really hard? Does success mean that I went to practice every day? Does success mean that I go to the Olympics? What does success mean? So, may, may, may I challenge you a little bit? This is kind of a challenging question. Is that okay? And feel free to get all from your um, workshop mates. Um, what is, so, if you have a growth mindset, is it the outcome or is it what you're going to learn or how much you're getting improving or how much your effort? So I think you, I think you nailed that one. Um, when you have a growth mindset, has anyone ever had a class and they don't put any effort into it and you get an A? I'm seeing some headshots. Has anyone ever had a class and they worked so hard for it? I mean, they had study groups, they have note cards on the wall, they have things highlighted, and they got a, maybe a, a grade that, when they first saw the class, maybe wasn't, this, wasn't as appealing to them. But when they saw that grade, they were like, score. Because they worked so hard. Which that can go back to your big why. Is it, is it, I wonder and I don't know, is the value maybe on different things. Like say if you were putting together a card and it was really challenging, but you couldn't put it together very quickly or a puzzle, like all those old fashioned puzzles where you put puzzles together, but it took you a really long time, would you feel more pride or more more six more hey I did this compared to um, hey I put together this puzzle that's five pieces or hey I put this car together that was pretty much put together already maybe that's something we can just kind of think about I'll leave you guys kind of ponder is it um, when you guys when you feel like you achieve something um, and you're really excited and proud about it, um, is it because of the effort or the ex or the outcome or a mixture of both? Okay. Say it again, please. I'm just gonna throw this random. Okay, say if your romantic partner, okay, bakes you a cake, okay, and this cake might not be the most delicious cake, but you know they worked really hard on this cake. They put effort on it, and they even wrote, try to write your name on it. It kind of drifted off the cake. It might be a little burnt underneath, oh. but they tried really hard on this cake. You know, they really want to make this cake for you, and then they. They, that's one situation. Versus, say your romantic partner went to go, um, or the, made a cake and they were able to make it from the box, it was really easy, and it was not something they worked really hard on. Is there a different level of, would they make you feel different, I guess? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Which one tastes better? Say they try to like personalize it and stuff, like thought on their part and like show something they're willing to like. So was that gift a success, even though it's a little burnt and falling apart and hearing a head shakes? Exactly. So I mean, and I think kind of on that point, unless if anyone has anything else to add, um, I'm going to leave you kind of with that thought that is it the effort or really is it the talent of baking the cake?
Um, I guess I'm going to open up for any questions or comments, I guess, before we end for today. And I think Maya has a few things to say, too. I want to thank you all for coming to the, to begin with. And second, remember we do have. If you are interested, and if you are watching this session right now, um, you would know that this web, this link right here will get you back to the next one. But for for you all, this workbook too, kind of probably a lot to kind of digest right now. Everything we talked about, but to know how important those two different mindsets are when it comes to making changes. You know, whether it's a small change or, or a larger change, to keep that in mind. And like we said, it, it is flexible. You can change. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of aware to wait a second. I am in this fixed mindset. Maybe that's one of the things that's preventing me from making lasting changes. And I want to say again is there's a lot of cool more resources on here. All this, oops, it's have the resources where I got these different things from. And, um, Click on them. There's a lot of free resources and stuff like that. So um, please, um, I'm Council Services. Don't so hesitate to ever call or questions about it. And I'm sure Mike feels the same way. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.